Hey everyone, welcome to the Complete Troubleshooting Guide. This is a video on diagnosing and potentially fixing image data issues. So these are relatively straightforward compared to some of the other problems you may have. Some are pretty challenging to fix. These sorts of issues are caused by something in your optical train having nothing to do with your mount, your guiding, or your software. These issues tend to look something like these images. If you are concerned your images are suffering from something like this, please keep watching to see a potential solution. So right off the bat, we're going to start with focus. Focus is probably the easiest thing to fix. Just get the star as sharp as you can while focusing. To make this easier, you can buy a Batonov mask for your telescope, which will make your stars look like this. A central point with three lines coming out of it. Just put the center line in between the two that are crossing and you are perfectly focused. You can also opt for a motorized focuser, which through the use of software can focus automatically for you. But this is obviously an expensive upgrade, which is why if you're just getting started, I would recommend using the batten off. If you can't reach focus and you are at the end of your focuser's travel, just try to increase the distance using an adapter. So basically you just want to increase that distance. If you are finding you can't get your camera close enough to the telescope to reach focus, try to reduce the distance between the camera and the end of the focuser as much as possible. So next is vignetting. Vignetting happens when your image circle is similar in size or smaller than your camera sensor, but it can still happen even when the entire sensor is within the image circle from your telescope. There is a central area that appears normal with a dark circle on the outer parts of your image. This can be fixed by using flat frames or acquiring a telescope with a wider image circle. Sometimes this can also be caused by certain adapters you're using, such as the one and a quarter inch adapter. If you're using that, just try and remove it and see if that helps. So next we have dust modes. These are strange artifacts that are caused by something blocking the light before it hits your camera sensor. And this is usually caused by bits of dust or a hair or something on your filter or camera sensor. They are not caused by dust on your lenses or primary mirror. And to fix this, you should take flats, which will correct for the loss of illumination and is beneficial for many other reasons. You should be taking flats regardless. You can also attempt to clean your optics or your camera sensor. To do this, I would recommend using an air bulb to blow the dust or hair away. Don't try to use a rag or paper towel to clean these, or you can scratch whatever it is you're trying to clean. So this is chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is when you have a bit of a blue or red tinge on your stars. And this is caused by your telescope not fully aligning the focus points between different colors, usually with red or blue becoming most prominent when you focus in on a star. This is a lot harder to fix and is usually a symptom of a poorly correcting front element or no correction at all in the case of singlet refractors, which only have one glass element at the front of the telescope. Some achromat telescopes can correct for this, and apochromatic telescopes should eliminate it completely. That said, having a cheaper field flattener can cause this issue as well. Unfortunately, this can only really be fixed by upgrading your telescope or field flattener or coma corrector. This problem does not exist in telescopes that don't use refraction, such as Newtonians. So next up is collimation. This is a problem that only really exists with reflector-style telescopes and is caused by your telescope's mirrors not being properly aligned. This results in misshapen stars. This can be fixed by collimating your telescope. A good piece of kit for any Newtonian user is a collimation tool, such as a laser collimator or a Shusher collimator. A good reminder is that the faster your focal ratio is, the less forgiving your telescope will be to improper collimation. I would recommend getting one of these tools and properly collimating your telescope before going out. Next is coma. Coma is a result of the parabolic mirror Newtonians use to collect and magnify light. Luckily, this is a relatively easy fix. All you need to do is install a coma corrector into your imaging train but unfortunately these are not super cheap and in some cases can cost as much as the telescope itself, but they are necessary if you want clean, crisp stars. These also require a good collimation to work properly. Next up is field curvature. Field curvature is similar to coma, but is in refractor telescopes. Since the glass at the front of your refractor is curved, it will bend the light entering it in different ways depending on how close to the center of the lens it enters. Further the light enters, the more stretched and blurred it is. That's why at the edges of your field, you'll have strange, elongated, and slightly blurry stars. This will also require a field flattener to correct. So this is what pinched optics are look like. The issue shows itself in your stars, where there appears to be strange aberrations around the star. For Newtonian users, this can be fixed by relaxing the grip of the clips that hold your primary mirror. Unfortunately, this is not easily fixed with refractor telescopes, and after having seen others try to fix this, I would not recommend doing it yourself. 
I know this is a pain, but you should contact the manufacturer of your telescope for repair or replacement. Next is tilt. Tilt appears to look something like this. This is caused by your sensor not being perfectly square with the light coming through your telescope. Essentially, one part of your sensor is within focus while the other part is ever so slightly out of focus. There are two kinds of tilt, one that is caused by your component sagging, which will change throughout the night as the orientation of the camera changes relative to the earth. The way that I've found to fix this is to try to ensure everything in your imaging train is fit together snugly, and when attaching your imaging train to your telescope, ensure that the focuser is holding it firmly and centered. This can be a problem in focusers that use screws to hold down the imaging train, but sadly this can't always fix it, and you may need to upgrade your focuser as cheaper or stocked focusers can sometimes be the cause. Tilt can also be caused by improperly installed components. So ensure you thread all the different parts of your imaging train together snugly without skipping threads. I once had a case of tilt that was caused by screws touching a part of an adapter that shouldn't have. I upgraded the screws to ones with a flat head that fit snugly within each well and my tilt issue went away. These are reflections and rainbows. Reflections can be caused by any number of things. If the light source is strong enough, it can reflect back off of the different filters and optical elements in your imaging train and go back down to your image sensor, resulting in what looks like a defocused star. Unfortunately, this can compound on itself until half of your image is full of strange circles originating from some bright star. These can be caused by improperly installed or cheaper filters from filters such as LRGB or narrowband for mono cameras, light pollution filters, or from a corrector. Unfortunately, the solution to this may just be upgrading your filters, changing the spacing between your filters and your camera, or simply just not imaging something with bright stars nearby. In my experience, they're usually caused by having a bright star right on the edge of your frame. These are another aberration that can be difficult to fix. Personally, I never tried to fix it and just tried to stay cognizant of what bright stars were near my target. So this is light pollution. This is a perk of living in civilization. In big towns and cities, light pollution can be a major detractor to your image quality. The higher the light pollution is, the less contrast you get between your image target and the atmosphere. This can cause strange gradients, higher amounts of noise when processing your pictures, and can limit the targets you are able to shoot. Trying to shoot very dim objects in a highly light polluted sky is very difficult. For example, here are two images I took with the same equipment. One was from my parents' backyard in central Jersey, and one was from a dark sky location in eastern Colorado. Can you tell which is which? The first one is 5.3 hours of data from a Bortle 6 zone. The second is a mere 45 minutes from a Bortle 2 or 3. Quite the difference. If you can make the journey to a dark sky site, it will vastly improve the quality of your images. Finally, we have noise. Noisy images are due to a lack of integration time. All cameras produce noise, but this can be fought by simply increasing the amount of exposures you have. This is called the signal to noise ratio, and you want to increase it as much as possible. Since noise is random, the more exposures you stack, the more the noise in your image will be averaged out while increasing the amount of actual real signal coming from space. You should also dither after every so many exposures or move your camera a few pixels around to avoid keeping certain pixels aligned with themselves. This fights hot and cold pixels, which will be stacked if you keep them aligned with each other. By moving the camera around, the pixel will get rejected when you align and stack your images. The first image you're seeing is a result of only five subs being stacked of my M106. The second is 40 subs. You can see the difference. Get more exposure time. That's it for common image data issues. I hope this video was helpful to you for diagnosing issues you may be struggling with. Be sure to check out my other videos in the Complete Troubleshooting Guide series for additional tips on issues unrelated to your image data. Also, please feel free to join the r slash astrophotography discord server or the r slash ask astrophotography subreddit for additional or more personalized help with your imaging woes. I wish you the best of luck with solving these issues and thank you for watching.